Let's get to our panel now. Liberal MP Zoe McKenzie and Labor MP Josh Burns joins us in, stepping in for Andrew Charlton this week. So, uh, Zoe, I'll go to you first of all to get your reply to Jason Clare. The detail, oh, or lack thereof, will that be damaging to the Coalition's prospects? No, I don't think so, Kieran, because Peter and Ted O'Brien have both said that there will be an expansive conversation about both our climate and energy policy over the following weeks. All that Peter has said this week is we can't see that we're going to get to 43 and we're going to be honest about it. We're not going to be hypocritical. We're not going to make promises off in the blue. We're going to be honest and realistic about what can actually be delivered. We know that that 43% is predicated on renewables at 83% of the energy market. They're at 40 right now. We can't see how you can realistically do it. And all we're saying is be honest. Josh Burns, uh, yeah, welcome to the program. And you, you heard your colleague there, Jason, oh, Clare, saying Carlton. there needs to be the sure. detail. But yeah, <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. No, I disagree with that. But anyway, on the cost of living, there is pressure on a lot of people. And maybe this message from, from uh, Peter Dutton is going to resonate right now, that people are less uh, committed or concerned on the climate front when they're struggling to pay the bills. It's bewildering on a number of fronts, KG. First of all, the Liberal Party lost, I forget how many seats at the last election because of this sort of insane climate denial policy. Um, seats like Goldstein, Wentworth, Kuyong, North Sydney, Warringah. I mean, one after the other, Zoe lost colleagues uh, who I'm sure she would like to have had in the federal parliament because the Liberal Party refused to have climate policy that was even, you know, even a little bit um, like acceptable to the Australian people. You know, no one lost their seat at the last election to someone who was offering lower climate targets. That's the first point. The second point to make is that climate change and the opportunities that Australia has to transition our economy to a low emissions technology is so important for our economic prospects. Climate change equals jobs. And it equals jobs in the regions, it equals jobs on renewable energy, it equals jobs on wind farms, jobs on solar panels, jobs on batteries, uh, jobs in critical minerals, jobs in all of the technologies that we are looking to try and create for the future of our country. What Peter Dutton is saying by not committing to our emission reduction target is that he's not committing to those jobs. And he's, the Australian people and the Australian workforce are going to miss out because Peter Dutton is too busy cozying up to Barnaby Joyce and all of the other climate deniers and the nationals. One of the, uh, the members of uh, the seats you referred to, the member for Curtin, is going to join me uh, shortly. Uh, no doubt got some thoughts on that particular issue. But I want to ask you about the jobs number. Zoe McKenzie, are, are we seeing here with this jobs number down for, for May... Is it the soft landing possible for the economy? Look, the figures are all over the place. We know we've had five quarters now of negative growth on a per capita basis. So the economy is slowing down. The economy is weak. 4% unemployment still means there's pressure on the RBA to be managing inflation. We're not getting inflation down like the rest of the developed world is. So pressure remains on rates. If you're already paying $25,000 more in your mortgage, you're already paying 22% more for your eggs, 23% more for your cereal, 18% more for your electricity, 25% more for your gas. None of this is particularly good news. People need to be in work. People need to get those jobs because they need to be able to pay the bills. The bills are not going down. They keep going in the wrong direction for the average Australian. And we are seeing a, a situation, Josh Burns, where there are increasingly many more working poor. Well, that's why we've put such a big effort into getting wages moving, KG, and the Liberal Party has opposed each and every measure that we have put forward to get wages lifted. Uh, they said it was going to end the country. The whole world was going to collapse if the minimum wage increased, uh, and it hasn't. It's meant that people who are working hard uh, have a little bit more at the end of the week. Uh, we, we obviously want to see people in, in good paying jobs, and we want to see people uh, in jobs. And I think the, the numbers today are encouraging that there have been an increase in the number of jobs in our economy to the tune of a net number of over 30,000. That's a that's a really important figure. It means 30,000 Australia, more than 30,000 Australians are back in the workforce. Uh, unemployment out of four is is a, a really healthy amount. 
obviously the economy and the economic growth is something that the Reserve Bank will look at when making their decisions. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that we have managed the budget in a responsible way, we have delivered two surpluses, uh, or we're in the process of delivering the second. Uh, the Liberal Party did not do that in their nine long years of governing. Mm. Uh, we've, we've exercised prudence, but also ensured that where, where we can give people cost of living relief to get through these difficult times and, and hopefully see the other side uh, in back when inflation is at a far more normal level. But we want to see people being able to afford the things that they need, live safely and securely, and that's what we're working towards to ensure that they can keep more of what they earn. We've only got about a minute left. I do want to get both your thoughts on this shift to the right uh, in Europe, in, in France, a country you know well, Zoe, um, where you're looking at the prospect of a 28-year-old Prime Minister potentially in France. Yeah, well, they do have a 34-year-old Prime Minister now in France. But what's interesting as well is that Macron came out last night and gave a 90-minute press conference in which he said, you know what, forget the extreme right, forget the extreme left. This is a choice about the sensible centre. So really recasting the political debate, not as one between left and right anymore, but between what you might call a responsible parties of government class and then the rest. So it's going to be a very interesting uh, election in a month's time. And, uh, Josh, it is cost of living again, number one issue. It, obviously, migration, things like that, but it's, it's still uh, it's a, univer a universal issue right now across the globe, cost of living pressures. Well, we are seeing a major political party in Australia move towards the, the, the far right. Peter Dutton's refusal to have credible climate policy, to have lower migration and blame all of the problems in society on migration are two uh, real big pivots towards the far right. So I think it's not just happening uh, in Europe, it's also happening in a, here in Australia. And if we want moderate, sensible governance, then we can't look towards Peter Dutton. Josh Burns, Zoe McKenzie, thanks. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon.